<laughs> and the headline reads, James Madison Monroe Cleveland Stone Rambo is 70. <laughs> My dad called me that. <laughs> 70. Yes, he's 70. Well, as our mother would have philosophically said, if you aren't 70, you wouldn't be here, so 70 looks pretty good. <laughs> Besides, in today's world, everyone knows 70 is the new 50. <laughs> so you actually have 20 more years before you're actually 70. I see. In the new reality. I see. As to the multiply named individual of this milestone age, exactly who is James Madison Monroe Cleveland Stone <laughs> And how did he get that moniker? As far as I know, he's always had it. Our father, who loved playing with language, bestowed it upon him, upon him and probably did so at birth or shortly thereafter. I've always heard it. <laughs> of course, he wasn't called James Madison Monroe Cleveland Stone Rambo all the time. <laughs> Too much of a mouthful. Sometimes he was called James Stone Rambo. <laughs> Especially when, as a very young lad, he refused to walk straight home from school, but stopped every day to play at a little friend's house, no matter what mother did. <laughs> of course, there were other times when mother resorted to James Tom Rambo, especially when Larry Beal and he let me play Indians with him, tied me to a tree, and then left me there. <laughs> When she responded to my caterwauling, mother was not very happy. In fact, had she known about it at the time, mother probably wouldn't have approved of seven-year-old Jimmy's vivid description of the supposed crazy woman who lived in an imposing, steeply terraced home in Joppa, Missouri, to his impressionable three-year-old sister. <laughs> James, don't ramble again. But most of the time in those younger years, he was just Jimmy. Why, Jimmy, what's the matter, son? <laughs> Asked our grandma after four-year-old Jimmy had been introduced to me, a newborn. Well, I thought I could give my big toys to Lynn to play with, but she's too little, so I'll have to give her my little toys, <laughs> he answered glumly. <laughs> Thank goodness he didn't have to share his little invisible friend with me. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, don't sit there. Wiggy's there. <laughs> Jimmy, stop that. It will make him stop, pleaded <laughs> Laura Ann, always pronounced Laura Ann. Three years older and much more sophisticated than her exuberant little cousin. Visiting relatives in Harlingen, Texas, Jimmy had just been told what certain suspicious leavings were. And he began running gleefully about, pointing to it and shouting, Chicken manure! Chicken manure! <laughs> Laura Ann was mortified. <laughs> Jimmy, go get your sister down out of that tree again whereupon the dutiful and irritated big brothers would go out to the big old stink trees in our yard in Independence, Missouri and scale them to help me down. And every time he said the same thing. If you can't climb down, don't climb up. <laughs> Come on, Jimmy, let's go play without her, pleaded Larry Beal one day. But Jimmy got stubborn. He answered, nope. She's my sister. And went into the house, leaving Larry dumbfounded. <laughs> sort of made up for the Indian incidents. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jimmy, stop it. Mother or Daddy would say whenever I shouted, Help! I can't breathe! <laughs> In response to Jimmy's tickling or acting like he was gonna. <laughs> and not even touching her. You can so breathe, he would say. <laughs> Jimmy and Lynn, come on. And we pile into the car for one of our family Sunday afternoon trips, <coughs> driving to the old municipal airport in downtown Kansas City to stand outside on the top deck and watch the planes take off. <laughs> in those days, the planes were all props, and it really was a thrill. <laughs> Jimmy, you and Lynn come on in for dinner. And we'd leave the catacombs of rooms we'd cut with a sickle out of the very tall weeds in the far back lot and run in to consume a meal of navy beans and ham hocks and cornbread with 
fresh spinach and mustard greens and green onions from our garden. Some nights there be hominy or whole boiled okra or black eyed peas. Yum. I'll miss you guys are drooling, aren't you? <laughs> okay, Jimmy, let's go. And off we'd all trudge to Slover's Park just down the way, eager to go sledding in the fresh snow. The old brown flyer flew with a sandwich of humanity sprawled upon its back. Dad on bottom, I on top, and Jimmy holding us together as the filling in the middle. <laughs> Seems like a lot more snow fell in Missouri in those days, enough to build great snow forts and to drape the huge two-story maple trees in our front yard and the equally tall row of lilac bushes in the back. Be careful, Jimmy, as the growing lad scaled the heights of any hill or structure to stand like king on the mountain on our car trips to California or Colorado. And then as we traveled to the next spot of interest, we lustily sang some old song in three or four part harmony enriched by Jim's and Dad's great baritone and bass voices. 